Hello, America, and uh, welcome to the uh, Friday exclusive. But we're just letting the riffraff in. We're just letting anybody in today. Uh, YouTube people. <laughs> well, they're, they're watching. We love YouTube people. Anyway, um, brought to you by American Giant. In the 1960s, 95% of the clothing Americans bought made right here in America. Now 97% is made overseas. Oh, that's gonna work out well. We don't make Jack anymore. We don't make our medicines. We don't make anything anymore. No, no, we have the intellectual prowess. Really? You see who's working on ChatGPT? Yeah, it's a Microsoft company. Ah, uh, they're working over in China on that one. Great. Okay, let me tell you about American Giant. American Giant is all about American workers and the products that they make and the things that we used to make that were great. Things that people worked hard on so they could take pride in their work. This, this company is really truly changing lives. One of these days I have to tell you about some of the people that work there. Um, in 2012, there was a factory, a clothing factory. It was in North Carolina and it was going out of business. And American Giant came in and said, okay, how about if we get some new machinery and we develop new skills? They opened that factory or reopened that factory 10 years later. They make some of the best American clothing you can find. Really good quality. And it is risky to make everything in America because it's hard. Their, their cotton is grown in America, milled in America, cut and sewn here in America, all assembled here. In, this is 100 percent American. Get your clothing from American Giant. American Giant, sorry, American-Giant.com slash Glenn. Go to American-Giant.com slash Glenn. All right. Going over the news today. Uh, I'm trying to get Riley Gaines on for uh, Monday, and I think we have Megan Kelly to talk about it as well on Monday's radio program. But if you didn't see, if you don't know who Riley Gaines is, she's the one that tied Leah Thomas. You don't know who Leah Thomas is? A dude with, let's just say, all of his swimsuits made by Banana Republic. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he's been winning all of these titles in women's swimming. Well, Riley Gaines is a girl who spoke out and was like, hey, this isn't cool, okay? This hurts women. I don't feel comfortable with him in the locker room. Well, she was just in a race, and they tied. They tied. That's an amazing accomplishment for Riley. They tied. But, of course, the judges said, look, we only have one person that can stand on the highest thing, so we're going to give it to Leah. Oh, okay. Well, anyway... Um, she was nice about it, didn't say anything about it, but Riley went to give a speech in, of all places, San Francisco. I'm going to show you what happened to her. I'm coming, I'm good, I'm good. Trust me, I'm good. Go ahead. Listen to them. Madness of crowds. You know what we should be talking about this week? Last week we had a trans shooter in Nashville. This week we thank goodness for the police in Colorado. They, because a concerned family member went, ah, uh, this guy is planning something. Police came in, they caught another trans shooter before he shot anybody. He had plans to shoot up schools and churches. He had the Communist Manifesto, um, and he's in the middle of transition. It's a really sad story. That makes four, four mass shooters that were trans people, and uh, one that was non-binary. We have an issue, because I personally put mass shooters all in the same category 
They're nuts. They're mentally unstable. I don't care if they're left or right. They're mentally unstable. What is happening to the trans community? Well, look at what you just watched. Look at how crazy and rabid they're becoming. There is great hatred and evil, and we can't play any role in that. I feel sorry for the people that are wrapped up. What is your life like if, you are, if you're that? Here's this girl who's just a swimmer. It's just like, I don't feel comfortable changing with the guy and his junk hanging out. Sorry. And who's standing up for women? My gosh, the Me Too movement. Where are you? It's a guy with his junk hanging out staring at her in a locker room. This just happened to her. She's like, I just wigged out. I turn around and he's standing there staring at me with no clothes on. Hello, me too. I guess, do you have to look like Harvey Weinstein to have anybody stand up for you? I, I mean, I don't, I don't know. Now, we are suffering as a society all over the world from either just fear so you just don't know what to say. You're like a deer in the headlights. Um, and you just don't want to be crushed. I don't want to be crushed. I don't want to be that person walking down the hall where everybody's chasing and yelling at me. So you have fear and you're a coward. Or you, you are so delusional that when challenged on the basic things, you still, you still don't recognize how hypnotized you are. Listen to the logic, this is Prime Minister of New Zealand. How do you and how does this government define a woman? Um, I, to be honest, Sean, that's, that, that question's come slightly out of left field for, for me. Um, the, well, biology, sex, gender, um, People define themselves. People define their own genders. Keir Starmer has said that he believes 99.9% .9 of women do not have penises. And I know it's a strange thing for him to say, but given recent events in New Zealand, I'd ask again, how do you define what a woman is? Well, as I've, I, I think as I've just indicated, I wasn't expecting that question, so it's not hey, something that I've... Uh, what he's saying here is I, I haven't talked to my, uh, my counsel. I... I I have to run that through and I have to find the right words that don't offend any. That's the easiest answer in the world. Okay, how do you define a woman? It's really easy. She has a womb, she has a vagina, she can, uh, she menstruates and she can have a baby. Okay, I can go to the chromosome thing if you'd like. This is really easy, but not in today's world. Why? Because we've gone insane. We have let the crazy people run everything. And we let them do it because we're in the hallway afraid of getting beat up. That guy's afraid. That's that, 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 there's your answer. You think you're getting an honest answer from that guy? No. He has no idea what to do. Here is um, 60 Minutes. This is from Australia. Listen to this. It might sound extreme, but it's happening all around the world. We're not trying to eliminate gender. We're actually trying to show how limitless gender can be, right? And just really helping kids find their own path to it and follow their lead so that they feel comfortable and authentic. In America, someone who knows how it's done is gender creative parenting guru and social scientist, Dr. Kyle Myers. Seven years ago, Kyle and her Australian husband, Brent, had their first baby, Zuma. We didn't assign a gender at birth and we didn't disclose Zuma's reproductive anatomy to people who didn't need to know. The reproductive anatomy that my kiddo was born with, I didn't want to assign too many labels oh, yeah. and okay, assumptions. Okay, stop. I can't take it. I, I don't, honestly, I don't know how, 
I, 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 I mean, are, am I alone in this? You're just like watching, you're going, how are the people that are running the camera just not say, you know, we're wrapping it up here. I, I mean, there, there's nothing to say. What, what are you talking, we didn't assign gender? No, of course you didn't assign gender at birth. God assigns gender at birth. It's not like for all of humanity, we've all been standing around going, what is it? What is it? And the doctor goes, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for you to tell me. No. We have to, with sympathy, empathy, look at people who are struggling. Look, first of all, I don't have a problem with transgender. You know, you know, you know what my stance was immediately on... Um, Caitlyn Jenner, my immediate response was, I feel horrible. This guy was, he was like a hero when I was growing up. He was, I mean, he was at the top of everything. He was on my Wheaties box for the love of Pete when I was growing up. And he felt that way his whole life. I feel so sad for him. I, I, whatever, dude, whatever makes you happy. That's fine. That's fine. But don't, don't force me to have my kids go to a story hour with you because that, that's, that's, I'm sorry. I don't know exactly what that is, but that's, that's not healthy. Gender is specific. The reason why we are created, we are created to be happy, but we are also created to procreate. Okay. If we all buy into, I'm a, I'm a cowboy. That's also a horse. It is the end of the human species. And quite honestly, I know a lot of people that would like that. You know, the fewer of these, these vermin around the better. I'm not one of those people. Um, and I, and I have to tell you, we are committing suicide. What's happening is evil. People aren't evil. People are hypnotized by evil. They can't, they can't, there's no rational explanation of anything. We have lost all truth in this country, all truth. And so anything goes. And that's why everyone sounds crazy because you'll say, wait a minute, take me back here. How did you get there? And they can't. They have to make up new words or new, complete new theories. We're experimenting on our children. I don't have a problem with you. If you you want to dress as a woman, call yourself a woman, whatever. I am not going to say you're a woman because you're not a woman. Okay? But you do you, do you boo. Me, I'm going to stick to the truth. And I will love you and care for you. But the minute you, as a doctor, start mutilating my child, the minute you come between me and my child and my God, and you're telling me I have to gender affirm, no thank you, no thank you. Why have we had four mass shooters that are transgender? Well, they're a pop part of the population, not that big of a part of a population. That's telling us something. That's telling us something. Not teaching it to my children. And I'm not going to, I will accept you, but you have to accept me. And you also have to accept the truth. But that seems, um, that seems really far away. Let's go to the Pentagon and John Kirby who they just finished a report on what happened in Afghanistan. Listen to this madness. And so for all this talk of chaos, I just didn't see it, not from my perch. At one point during the evacuation, there was an aircraft taking off full of people, Americans and Afghans alike, every 48 minutes. Stop. And, not one and he didn't see the chaos. Hmm. At one point, um, during the evacuation, there was an American plane that was taking off uh, and people were hanging on to the tire and the wings and they dropped from 
way up in the sky and died. That's not chaos. You didn't see that. How about all the people that were killed? How about people that were killed at the gates? How about the people that were killed at the gates where it could have easily been stopped because our Marines knew who had the explosive device, had them in their targets, and you people wouldn't allow them to shoot. You didn't see all that. You didn't see the 13, uh, was it 13 or 14 Marines that died? All those soldiers that just died. You didn't see that. Wow, because I did. I, I don't know at the Pentagon how you missed that, but if one of those people that died were one of my loved ones, I'd be apoplectic right now. Um, especially cut two, because he says this. People don't have an issue with the decision to order troops out of Afghanistan. It is with the way that this president ordered it done. There were children being killed. There were people hanging off of Air Force jets that were leaving. And you're saying that you guys are proud of the way that this mission was conducted? Does it mean of that? Proud of the fact that we got more than 124,000 people safely out of Afghanistan? Bull you crap. bet. Bull crap. Bull crap. They left so many people behind. They, they did everything they could to stop us from rescuing people. We actually had to take the soldiers in order to get permission to have our first plane take off with all the red tape. We had to make and fill our first plane with soldiers. We've never said this. With soldiers, special forces, they left behind. You're proud of that. Mm. You know, because if you worked for me, I'd fire your ass. Proud of that. That's like, where, that's like your, your kids getting uh, a D minus in one class and Fs in everything else, and they come home. And they got them, not because they're stupid, but because they just didn't pay attention, didn't do their homework, nothing. And they're like, yeah, but I'm proud of the fact that, I mean, look at Dad, I got a D in that one. Here's John Kirby. Well, who's going to get fired over this? Peter, the purpose of the document that we're putting out today uh, is to sort of collate the chief reviews and findings of the agencies that did after action reviews. Um, uh, the, it, it's not, the, the purpose of it is not accountability. Oh. Oh. So is it like story hour? Is that why you, or do you have a drag queen coming in and reading this report to everybody? I, I don't understand. If you're doing a report on something and it's not for accountability, why the hell are you doing the report? It, it, really? I mean, well, obviously they're proud of it. So it is absolutely story hour. Uh, but that's the way it is everywhere now. Story hour. Here's Janet Yellen. Listen to, now, Janet Yellen is in charge of our money. She's in charge of making sure that the banks are all regulated, that we don't have any problem. She's in charge of our money. She's talking about climate change. Listen to this. And as others have said, the Inflation Reduction Act is, at its core, about turning the climate crisis into an economic opportunity. Treasury is playing a central role in the Inflation Reduction Act's implementation effort. An estimated $270 billion of the law's investment is delivered via tax incentives, and we have been quite busy in our implementation. I thought tax cuts for big corporations was bad. What? I, I'm sorry. And wait, did you just actually affirm what we've all known and what other politicians have said, but you kept saying it was a conspiracy theory? The Inflation Reduction Act primarily is about climate change. Because I got news for you. It's not the heat 
that are making my dollars have sex with each other so they birth more. That's not what's happening. Climate change has nothing to do with inflation. But thank you very much for confirming that. This is, have you noticed the pattern? It's becoming more and more insane and they don't care. They are not telling you the truth. They get to the, there was just another state that said, yeah, no more gas appliances and gas stoves. I thought that was a conspiracy theory. Everything they do is a conspiracy theory until it's not. Why? Because they need the dumb Americans to stay in their seats and don't pay attention until it's too late. If we wanted climate change, to be the number one national priority than it should have been on the ballot. But it wasn't. It wasn't. You know what people voted for when they voted for George, uh, for uh, what's his face? Uh, Joe Biden. You know what they voted for? They voted for a restoration of norms. That's what people were saying. I just, it just it's, this craziness has just got to stop. America, has the craziness stopped? Or has it gotten worse? You tell me. They lied to you and continue to lie to you every step of the way. And these people work for you. But we have forgotten that apparently far too often, especially when it comes to the border. You know, this border thing, I just don't know what they're talking about. Listen to this. The first weeks in office, the Biden administration halted deportations for 100 days, stopped all border wall construction, and suspended the Remain in Mexico policy. Critics say it all added up to putting a come in, we're open sign on the door. I don't think that the more than million people last year that we removed or expelled would consider the border open. But the messaging, but was the messaging wrong there that, you know, we're open? That wasn't our messaging. But that was the message. But that's messaging. what migrants were getting. Because remember something, that we are not the only source of messages that the migrants receive. Right. We have smuggling organizations USDA, that exploit USAID. the migrants. And those smuggling organizations engage in mis- and disinformation. Oh, it's that dreaded mis- and disinformation. Because they turned away a million people. Of course... They think that at least two million got in, but that had nothing to do with them. No, no, of course not. It couldn't have. It couldn't have. It was just a coincidence that as Joe Biden was sworn into office, there were lines of people crossing the border. It's just a total coincidence that it happened that week. And like he said, there's other you know, they're, they're not the only messengers. You've got the George Soros people. You have the Democratic Socialists of America. You got a lot of helpers there. You got a lot of people, a lot of people. Uh -huh. And don't talk to me about crime. These people have, they have in effect partnered with the uh, drug cartels, partnered with them. We had a decent relationship with Mexico under Trump. Um, we had the border fairly under control. Could have been better, but it obviously could be much, 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 much worse. We had a decent relationship. Do you know that um, Biden has so trashed our relationship with Mexico uh, that we are, we now have Mexico calling up China bad-mouthing us openly and saying we're out of control and we're a threat to their sovereignty and they need help. China, Mexico, everyone is a bad... I thought we were going to return to being respected on the world stage, being the leader on the world stage. Uh, no, 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 we were, we were, um, but now we're not. And because of that, and because climate change is our priority that none of us ever voted on, um, that means that your dollar is going to collapse. Let's see how that works out for all of these people. You just stay with us.
we will give you all the information that you can uh, that you need I'm probably going to share some stuff with you next Friday because I want a one-on-one -on -one with you and explain some things that um, I've been praying about um, that I think you should know but I just want to leave you with this we know how this story ends we know how this story ends if people don't stand up but we also know how this story ends if we try to fight hatred with hatred anger with anger we the God-fearing people in America have got to have spines of steel we have to stand up and speak out but we also have to shod our feet with the gospel of peace Martin Luther King should be everyone's example back in one minute with one other thing for you that I think you'll enjoy first let me tell you about uh, Patriot Mobile Americans have had it they're supporting companies that rake in hundreds of millions of dollars sometimes billions of dollars while trashing the country peeing all over it you didn't have a choice until recently Patriot Mobile now is helping build a whole new secondary economy one which embraces the values that made America the greatest country on earth Patriot Mobile, America's only Christian conservative wireless provider, dependable nationwide coverage, all three major networks, so you can get the best possible service in your area. Plus, they offer coverage guarantee. If you're not happy with your coverage, you can switch to a different network for free. All this, plus the knowledge that you're supporting free speech, sanctity of life, and the Second Amendment, our military, when they're operating properly our first responder heroes 100 percent u.s based customer service team makes it easy just go to patriotmobile.com slash back patriotmobile.com slash back or call 878 patriot okay i want to leave you i want to leave because it is easter weekend i want to leave you with some hope and some charity hi I'm Farrah McGrendelson. Will you be an angel for a helpless lib? Every day, innocent libs are ratioed, flamed, and even neglected. For just $8 a month, you can sponsor a liberal, providing them with a blue check, and more importantly, with hope. That's about the cost of one white chocolate low whip almond milk latte light froth, or one gallon of gas. Call now. Your donation will provide identity verification, all the benefits of Twitter Blue, and a newfound sense of self-worth to a poor needy lib. Plus, you'll receive a photo and regular updates from your sponsored lib. Everyone knows the only people worth listening to are blue checks. Don't let a lib become an absolute waste of a human being. Browse our database of needy libs today. Please act now, because due to inflation, $8 will soon be worth $4, and then you'll have to pay $16. Right now, there's a lib who's in need, and you can help. Don't wait.